Hi, and welcome to Pet Pals. Every week we showcase animals that are available for adoption through the Frederick County Animal Control Center and Pet Adoption Center. I'm Linda Shea, and with me today is Randy Cooper. The first animal that we're going to showcase for Pet Pals is Bentley. Bentley is a seven-month-old, seven-and-a-half-month-old pit bull mix. He came to us previously owned. His owners were unable to keep him where they lived, did not allow this breed, so that's how Bentley ended up with us. Um, he is very affectionate, very energetic, and the joy of having a puppy this age is that you've kind of bypassed the puppy stage of being eight weeks old or ten weeks old when they're fairly destructive, and you're into the, the part of their lives when they are very willing to learn. So even though he's you know seven and a half months old, um, he can still learn things, and he's responding very well, actually, um, working with clicker training. According to his owners, he knows how to sit. We've seen that. Um, he also knows how to jump. That was one of the commands his owners trained him to do, which we would discourage, we would dissuade. Um, given his size, he's about 50 pounds, it would be best if, if Bentley learns to keep all four paws on the ground, and that would be simple to train him since he seems to be food motivated and just very um, attentive and responsive to his handler. Anytime you're thinking about a bully breed, you do want to take into consideration you need to take responsibility, be accountable for turning them into good ambassadors for the breed. Unfortunately, they get a bad rep, um, un undeserved. Pit bulls are typically very loyal, very smart, and you can see he's pretty responsive. So again, this is Bentley looking for a home, um, and his intake number is 15-1914. The next pet that we're going to take a look at is Miguel. Miguel is a Chihuahua Rat Terrier mix. He's about um, six months old. His family purchased him from a pet store and now they're in the process of moving, unable to take Miguel along, so he's here with us at the shelter. We're trying to rehome him. He is about 22 pounds. Um, you can see that he thinks he's a lap dog. Certainly at six months old, he's pretty much finished growing. I can't imagine he would get um, much, much bigger than he is right now. Miguel came to us already neutered, current on vaccines, so his previous family did do the best they could as far as keeping him current on vaccines and getting the appropriate vet checks, but in the process of moving, they can't take him. So that is something you need to consider if you're gonna introduce a, a pet into your life. You wanna make sure it's a lifetime commitment. Um, and I think most people go into that thought that it is a lifetime commitment, but certainly when it comes to a point of making a decision of you know, living somewhere that doesn't allow pets. We, we are open admission here at Frederick County Animal Control Division. Um, our goal is that people that have pets keep pets, but certainly we're here as a last resort. So Miguel is here, he's looking for a home. He is a puppy. He would go through the puppy process for adoption, meaning that we take up to four applications and we screen fairly heavily because we want to make sure that the next home Miguel goes into is forever. So again, if you're looking for a younger dog, this is Miguel, about six months old. This is Apple, another dog that's available for adoption through our facility. Apple came to us as a stray. In today's Pet Pals, eight out of the ten animals that we're showcasing were previously owned, but Apple is one of two that came to us as a stray. She is a terrier mix. Again, we're guessing her age to be eight to ten years old. Um, she is very affectionate. She uh, is definitely fully grown. She's only about 15 and a half pounds. Um, she's got a little reverse sneezing going on. If you've ever had a small dog, sometimes we, uh, we always recommend for small breeds to put a harness on them as opposed to a collar. Sometimes a collar can put too much pressure on their trachea and they, they tend to cough or, or snort a little bit more. But um, she is very affectionate. And we always ask ourselves when we get dogs in like this or cats or other animals that come to us as stray, um, where are their owners? <laughs> We're the only facility in Frederick County where open admission Certainly if you're, you're missing a pet, you want to make us your first stop, your first phone call. And even if you call in and, and you're told that your pet is not here, we really encourage you to come in to identify whether your pet is here or not because sometimes in phone messages and emails, the description that you have of your pet may be very different than what we have because again, you have information on your pet. We're just guessing and, and taking educated guesses as to age and breed. And, and other other things so but apple is very well behaved um, she is color-coded orange meaning that she um, 
She does pretty well. She walks nicely on a leash. As you can see, she jumped up into Randy's lap. She's very affectionate. She's used to a family of some sort, so we would love to place her with a forever home. Being eight to 10 years old, she has many, many more years to go as a small breed. Um, and again, we would encourage you, if you're interested in adopting Apple, come in and visit her. Eight to 10 is not old, and she certainly has, has a young personality for that age group. So again, this is Apple, a little terrier mix looking for a forever home. Sam is the next puppy we're gonna take a look at. Sam is a Pomeranian pug mix. He is about six months old. He's about 21 pounds. And Sam is very, very shy. He was previously owned, but a lot of times um, dogs may be inherently shy. It may be the case where he wasn't offered the opportunity to, to be properly socialized. So when we um, have behavior assessed him, we've behavior assessed all of our dogs, we've color coded him green. And if you come to our shelter, you'll notice that the animals that are color coded green, their cage cards are green. Um, they're a little more shy. They need a little more work as far as socialization. They need um, a home that's willing to invest resources as far as time and patience to draw out this dog's personality. But he is very affectionate, very sweet. He does need work walking on a leash. Uh, Randy had to carry him in, which is not unusual for dogs that are shy. Fortunately, he's only 21 pounds, but he will get to be a little bit bigger, fill out a little bit more. So ideally, he'll go to a home that can teach him how to walk on a leash, that will teach him that the world is not a bad place, that will learn to um, encourage good behavior through positive reinforcement. Sometimes there are training, um, training uh, techniques out there that are not necessarily um, the best. Sam would do best in a home that uses positive reinforcement such as food or um, commands that are reinforced with, with um, sort of like a cheerleading effort. When he does something good, you want him to know that he did something good and he's more likely to respond to that. So Sam is a puppy. We'll take up to four applications for him because we want to make sure that wherever he ends up next will be the last stop in his life. So again, this is Sam, a puppy looking for a home. Ziggy is one of several rodents that's available for adoption through our facility. Ziggy is a guinea pig. He's about two years old. He was turned in by his family. The owner developed allergies to him. And it's not unusual. A lot of people think that guinea pigs are, are great pets, which they are. But they require um, hay in their uh, cage. They require special bedding. And sometimes you may not be actually allergic to the guinea pig itself, but you might be allergic to the Timothy hay, which is required. Um, sometimes we'll give them alfalfa. They uh, have a diet all their own in addition to good quality guinea pig pellets. They need dark greens such as spinach, green pepper. So when you go grocery shopping, if you have a guinea pig in your life, you know that you have an extra two or three items that you need to pick up for them every week. Guinea pigs are fairly low maintenance, however. They do live in a cage. Uh, an obligation that you have as a pet owner of a guinea pig is to keep them safe. If you have any dogs or cats or other animals in your home, you want to make sure that the guinea pig's housing unit is um, pet proof from the other pets getting in there. And um, Ziggy started out at a pet store. So you want to give it quite a, you know, some time in thinking if you actually want to introduce um, a rodent into your home that you're able to purchase from a pet store simply because at pet stores the screening is not in place. We have a screening process here at Animal Control. We want to make sure that we educate you as far as what the animal needs. We also want to be able to answer questions that you have because those are the two things that are sometimes going to make or break a relationship with a pet. You want to make sure that you have ahead of time all the information that you need to make a good decision as far as introducing a pet into your home. So this is Ziggy. He is available for adoption. We've got several other guinea pigs. We've got some rabbits. We've got gerbils all available for adoption from our facility. So we encourage you, if you're looking for a new pet, to come and, and visit. So we're going to take a short break. And after the break, we'll be back with more animals available for adoption from Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center.
Don't let your turkey or your home go up in flames. Grease and cooking related insurance claims more than double during the holiday season. Please use these safety principles when using turkey fryers. Don't overfill your pot with oil. Don't drop a frozen or partially thawed turkey into the oil. Don't place your turkey fryer close to structures or on decks. Do not use ice or water to cool down oil or extinguish an oil fire. Don't leave your fryer unattended. For other safety tips, contact the Frederick County Division of Fire and Rescue Services at 301-600-1536 or visit frederickcountymd.gov slash turkeyfryer. Can't get enough Zumba in your life? Sign up for any of our Zumba classes held at all of our rec centers throughout the county, including our new Boundary Community Building and our new To The Point Dance Studio in Point Rocks. Come on, join the Zumba craze, and you'll have so much fun you'll forget you're even working out. For more details on scheduling, check out our website at recreator.com. Transit Services of Frederick County. With rising gas prices, transit is a less expensive way to work or school. Most commuter bus routes run every 30 minutes during weekday morning and afternoon rush hours. Bus stops are within a quarter mile of most businesses in downtown Frederick. Transit offers shuttles to Thurmont, Emmitsburg, Brunswick, Jefferson, Spring Ridge, and Route 85, or take a shuttle to the Mark train for an easy commute. Find out what nearly one million passengers already know. Transit connects people and places. Getting your flu vaccine is the best way to prevent getting the flu and possible complications from the flu. People most susceptible to the flu include children five years old or younger, people 65 years or older, pregnant women, people with health issues such as asthma, diabetes, and heart disease, and people who take medication that might weaken the immune system. If you have the flu or want to avoid getting the flu, here are some pointers. Cover your cough and sneeze with your arm or use a tissue and wash your hands. Wash your hands with soap and water. If not available, use a hand sanitizer. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Avoid being around sick people. Stay home from school or work if you are sick until you are free of a fever for 24 hours. Contact your health care provider if you are sick. To learn more about the flu, please call the Health Department Flu Information Line at 301-600-3035 or visit frederickcountymd.gov slash flu. Welcome back to Pet Pals. We're going to showcase today five more animals that are available through Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. First kitty cat that we're going to look at is Christina. Christina came to us as a stray back on October 17th from Carpenter Road in Frederick. And again, about 50% of the animals that we take in each year are stray, about half are owned. And Christina is a good example of why if you're missing a pet, you want to physically drive to the shelter, 1832 Rosemont Avenue, and look for your pet yourself. Phone calls and emails um, would not ever possibly be able to describe this kitty cat as far as her color, as far as her temperament, as far as her looks. It's just impossible to capture all that. So to identify your pet, we really encourage you to come to the shelter if you're missing your pet. But Christina arrived here as a stray. She is about 10 to 12 months old, so she's relatively young. We know that she belonged to somebody at some point because she came to us already spayed. So she had to have been somebody's pet, so we're not sure what the background is on her, how she ended up as a stray, but she's a domestic short hair. She's very petite. She's only a little over five pounds. She has a great temperament, great personality. Um, in addition to behavior assessing dogs, we don't really behavior assess cats, but we do gauge their temperament. So she is color-coded orange, meaning that she's sort of middle of the road. Blue cats are the ones that are lap cats. Green tend to be kittens, um, where cats are a little more active. Christina's kind of middle of the road at orange. 
but she is available for adoption. The color of Christina is considered torby, meaning that she's got the, the basic tabby markings of the stripes, but then very subtle in there is also orange. So that's how she ends up, how we classify her as a torby. So again, Christina is just one of many cats that's available for adoption uh, this week, and we're showcasing her as our first kitty cat on Pet Pals this week. This is Zoe. We had just looked at Christina, who was about five pounds. Zoe is about 13 pounds, actually almost 14 pounds, so she's a little bit larger than Christina. Uh, she's got the same beautiful colorings. We consider Zoe to be a, a Torby, the tabby color with the orange markings, and she's got some white uh, markings also to, to offset that beautiful coat. Zoe is about six years old. She actually originated from Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center back in 2008. Um, from the time of her adoption, she's had a couple of families being passed around, and um, inevitably she has ended up here, turned in by someone who uh, had a newborn baby, developed allergies, could not keep her any longer. So Zoe is here and looking for a forever home. Again, any time that you are interested in adopting a pet from our shelter, we're the only shelter in Frederick County, there's an interview process, there's an application process, and the process is not to give people a difficult time in adopting. The process is to be able to educate potential adopters and go over the history, the medical history, and any background history on the animal that you're interested in because we really have a sincere effort here to make sure that pets that leave here go to good homes. We want to make sure that the people that are adopting our pets have an idea of what they're getting into and we don't want any surprises. That's not fair to you, not fair to us, not fair to the animal that ends up being returned. So, um, but Zoe is here looking for a home. She's about six years old. She's got many more years to go. Cats can live an average of 15 years, but much longer certainly if they've got good care and, and safekeeping. So Zoe is one of many cats available for adoption at our facility. This handsome kitty cat is JJ. JJ is about two years old. He came to us previously owned. Your basic domestic short hair, white with brown tabby markings. And he's about 10 and a half pounds. And JJ came to us on October 29th. We didn't place him on the adoption floor until somewhere um, around 11 or November 13th. And sometimes there is a delay in moving cats, especially from our, what we call our triage area when they first come to the shelter to the adoption floor. We do screen cats a little more heavily than we do dogs. We screen them for two viruses they can carry, feline leukemia, and cats have their own version of AIDS, so we screen them for that as well. So any cat that you look for, uh, look at on our adoption floor have already screened, been screened for those two viruses. The adoption fee for cats is $97.50, and what that covers, because some people will say, oh, I can get a cat for free, well, you can uh, obtain a cat for free, but ultimately if you're going to spay, neuter, rabies vaccinate, distemper vaccinate, deworm, treat for any medical condition they might have, test for feline leukemia and FIV, um, microchip them so in case they get lost and come back, uh, come to the shelter, we can find your, their owner. Um, that's going to cost you a lot more than $97.50, which is our adoption fee. And for cats, we have the same process we do for any, any other animal here. There's there's the adoption process where you fill out an application, you go through an interview, and again, it's not to give you a hard time, it's not to make it difficult. Um, we just wanna make sure that where these animals end up is forever. A lot of times, animals that show up here at our facility, this might be their third or fourth stop so far in life, and they might only be six months old. Uh, JJ is two years old and, and again, previously owned, but came to us neutered, so that was a good start. His owners just were unable to keep him um, they were moving and they could not take him along, so that's how he ended up here. The other thing you want to note is that the animals that end up, end up in our shelter, it's never their fault. Um, it's some decision that their previous owners made that caused them to be here. So again, this is JJ looking for a forever home. This is Hercules. He is a very handsome black and white domestic short hair. Hercules is about a year old. He is already neutered. So when you're looking at cats, the joy of this age group is that he is relatively still a kitten at about a year old. Still very playful, energetic, interested and in, in enthusiastic in learning about life. But um, with a cat this age, you've bypassed that 
eight to 10 week old kitten that gets into everything and can do some damage around the house. Now, not to say that he wouldn't get into things and do some damage, but they're starting, their temperaments at this age are starting to level off, starting to stabilize, and you can kind of gain a glimpse of what they're going to be when they're adult cats. But Hercules came to us previously owned. Even though he's previously owned, we don't have a lot of information. The person that turned him in said that he was given to her as a gift and she could no longer keep him. But again, he came to us already neutered, so we are glad about that. Um, we have snap tested him for leukemia and FIV. He's on our adoption floor, so those of you that watch Pet Pals or that are fans of the shelter know that that means he's negative for both of those viruses. That's important to know if you're introducing a cat of ours into a cat that's already existing in your home. Um, he has, we've brought him up to speed on vaccines, on deworming. That is part of our adoption process here. When we're examining animals that come in, we make sure that they have any medical care, medical treatment preventatives that, that they need to be able to become adopted. Um, so again, Hercules is one of the many cats. He's only around nine pounds at a year old. He might fill out a little bit more, but pretty much he's stable as far as what size he is. And again, he's a classic black and white cat. So if you're looking for a new family member that's feline and black and white, Hercules would be a great choice. This very handsome kitty cat is Bagheera. He's about three years old. He's a neutered male and he is an owner turn-in. He actually was in our shelter. He was adopted for a short while and came back. So he's considered a return to shelter. Shelters across the United States do statistics on a regular basis and most shelters have a return rate of about 10% of their animals, 10 to 12%. So Bagheera is what we consider a return to shelter, not something that we strive for. Certainly our adoption process is one that's aimed towards placing animals in forever homes, but in this case, um, he was unable to stay where we placed him. The reason he was returned is that he was keeping his owners up at night. You have to understand that cats are typically nocturnal animals. So if you need your eight hours of beauty sleep at night, you want to take that into consideration when you're adopting a feline. Even kittens can keep, keep you up and stay busy throughout the, uh, throughout the night, so you want to make sure you know that. Um, Bagheer, again, he's about three years old, about 13 pounds, so he is on, on the larger um, size of, of a kitty cat, um, but in good health. Again, he's current on all vaccines. He's neutered, he's microchipped. We snap tested him for leukemia and FIV, which is negative. So we're looking forward to, to placing him in a forever home. At any point when you're looking on our adoption floor, if you've got questions about animals, staff and volunteers are here to help answer questions, to help guide you in the right direction. That's our job here, so don't ever hesitate to, um, to ask us questions. But again, Bagheera is looking for a forever home. And that is it for this week's Pet Pals. As always, we enjoy showcasing the animals that are are at our facility. We are Frederick County Animal Control Division and Pet Adoption Center, 1832 Rosemont Avenue. We've enjoyed showing off our animals today. Hopefully you can come in and visit and we will see you next week on Pet Pals.